All right, ladies and gentlemen, super pumped to be here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is Honest to God, brought to you by AM 1160 The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. Is that right? Did I do that right? Uh, yeah, production of it. Uh, uh, production the quest. of. Okay, production of the quest. Okay, yeah, don't worry. Next time, I'm totally going to nail it. That's like the 12th time I've done it. I've not gotten it right one time, but we're going to do it soon. We're talking today. <laughs> We're talking today about what are we talking about? Saint Ed, Saint uh, Yeah, becoming a saint. Is becoming a saint. And uh, this episode is full of some incredible surprises, particularly in the second half. But at the moment, I want you to take the moment if you're on YouTube and hit that whoa, like whoa, whoa, button. Whoa, whoa. I was about to give a segue into that. I had a really good segue built up. Oh uh, well, see, you went to the better school. Of I was going to say, yeah, as a as a graduate of the Harvard School for Segways, um, <laughs> I, if you want to become a saint, there's one surefire way. <laughs> And it's by liking and subscribing to this episode of Honest to God, uh, brought to you by AM 1160, a production of AM 1160, Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. It, right. It'll at least get you on the path. I can't say that it'll, it'll help. get become it won't hurt. Hurt. <laughs> but it won't hurt. There is definitely a plenary help. indulgence. I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that, that, that is not true. There's not. There's not. Um, what's this airing? Is this airing during? I mean, I know all episodes of Honest God are live. What day is it? This, this will day? air on a day that it airs. Oh, yeah. which is today. Which is up. today. Every episode of Shout out to those in Athens. Is and live. Which we are thrilled they are officially listening to us now. Saturdays at four at the same time as they are in Atlanta. So hello, Athens. Yeah. This is producer Julian for all of my friends out there that helped make this a reality. Thank you. We love you guys. Big subscribe on YouTube. Shout out to the capital of Greece. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. Hey, fun fact. Um, you know Ajax, like the uh, the dish soap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So their like tagline or catchphrase or whatever is like stronger than Greece. Right, because it's a dish soap, right? Whoa. Which makes sense. But Ajax is from the Iliad. He is this like the strongest guy in Greece, right? After Achilles or something. And it's really this cool little pun. I think that's neat. That has nothing they, to do they with the show today. Very well through. I'm <laughs> proud of him. <laughs> no. Oh. No, he's a pagan. He died, I think, in trying to take Troy. Did he die? We'll get we'll get shows been to check. So that he's out not shooting for sanctity. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he's not. He could be one of the like the righteous pagans. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. We're not going to talk about righteous pagans today. Today we're going to talk to <laughs> AJ JJ <laughs> JJ uh, who has joined us for the first time in a long time. Glad to have you back. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk to Hannah, who's brand new to the show. It's going to be a great day. We're going to talk to Mary, who's another veteran. We're going to talk to David. Man, it's good to have you back, David. <laughs> How long has it been? Oh, it's been a year. Uh, no. Eight months. Eight months? Eight months. Exactly, yeah. I exactly. That, nah, I don't know if it's exactly, but yeah. Well, it's good to have you back. I told you I'm going down with uh, a bunch of teenagers, including your brother, on Saturday to Forsyth, Georgia, to uh, to Camo. It's a big uh, retreat center down there. We're going to do a lot of fishing and a little bit of, little bit of crazy kind of stuff and a uh, whole lot of four-wheeler riding and, yeah, shoot some sporting clay. It's going to be fun. All right. Don't get shot. No, not going to. We're going to. We're going to go through fun facts here in a minute. Everybody has this one except for Hannah. You have three uh, because it's your first time on the show. But first, we're going to pray. You might want to volunteer. Is JJ going to do it? I guess that's me. Bust out those Byzantine <laughs> blessings, baby. I'm all about them. They're really good. Oh, I'll go full Byzantine. All right. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O God. Glory be to you, O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, forever present and fill all things, treasure of blessings, and giver of life. Come to all in us, especially today, in this Honest to God episode. Give us the words we need to say and inspire everyone to follow you and, most importantly, to love you. Amen. 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 88. That, that was the grade for the prayer. Oh. <laughs> Which isn't bad. No, I mean, yeah. that's like a pretty solid. I need an A or we're going to schism again. Uh, no, 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 we're not dead. We already went for dead. All right, fine. For the sake of ecumenism and preserving the one true church, okay. uh, you can have a you can have an 89.5, which will round up to okay, okay. Comment Under- below what you think his grade was. And also, John Henry, you failed to uh, acknowledge our friend that's sitting behind JJ, who's joined us, uh, who's off. Yes, the that mic is that is on camera. Who is also in the studio? Who has a name, and it was told to me, and uh, it is a great name, and that is because your name is Megan. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Hi, Megan. You're killing it. Uh, Megan's just hanging out. <laughs> hanging out, learning about the show. Hanging Perhaps out, yeah. we'll get her on very soon. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Let's start with fun facts. What you got? Uh, not something a Catholic wants to say, but I had demonized for like three weeks. You had what? 
demon eyes demon eyes what does that mean the uh the doctors had some fancy name for it but that didn't stop my brother from being scared of me what's wrong with your eyes <laughs> it it wasn't i couldn't even find it i was thinking about it like a while ago and i searched red eyes it wasn't like pink eye or conjunctivitis it wasn't inflamed they were full red whoa yeah how long ago was this um i had to be like 10 or something oh, like a long long time ago. i mean it was a scary thing for a 10 year old to wake up to every day yeah Mirrors were my personal cross to bear. Man, that was a really fun fact. Dude. Thank you. I really like that. What'd you get, Hannah? Um, I also had demon eyes. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I um, I served with uh, Net Ministries Ireland for three years. Uh, so I lived over there. Um, what three years? When were you over there? 2019 to 2022. So okay. during COVID, I have a few really well, dear friends who did yeah. that ministries Ireland, but it was well before that. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Um, other fun facts. Uh, I bought a house last year. Nice. Um, so I'm I'm learning about all the hoopla with that about mm -hmm. it falling down, kind of a thing. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> super fun. Um, and then uh, other fun facts. Uh, at work, I use power tools all the time. I love. I always say it's a good day when you get to use power tools. What do you do? So, um, I'm an engineer. I work for a, a car seat manufacturer. Oh, cool. Makes car seats for kids. So That's awesome. Wow. Nice. What you got, Mary? I need like a prompt. <laughs> Fun facts. <laughs> like, I have, about I have health problems, you? demon eyes. <laughs> Animal, animals. Fact about it could be about you. animals. Um, I, I, we have four ducks now. That's a fun that fact. That's an awesome fact. So fun. <laughs> I was up. I was telling myself, but I'll say it again. I'm, I'm very tired because last night I was up until about 3.30 in the morning because we, you know, we have a little farm and we had a whole bunch of new chicks, like, oh. you know, a couple dozen new chicks and the power went out and it's not cold, but it's super windy and we're up on top of a mountain and those baby chicks will freeze to death in very, very warm temperatures. Oh. And so we had to go collect all the chicks and bring them into my house because my generator is not hooked up yet and put them in my living room in a pen. And then we built a big roaring fire in a wood burning stove. And we spent the whole night sort of feeding this fire and keeping the chicks happy. And every time they would start to cluster up together, we'd say, okay, more on the fire. And then they get comfortable and get back out again. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm excited. Exhausted. It's a good day. That is so cute. Super cute. <laughs> Totes cute. cute. All right, David, what you got, man? I got my license to drive a bus the other day. Cool. Nice. That's That's great. Great. Yeah. yeah. Like your uh like a commercial bus? Like yep. for like the school bus. That's, That's what I get the license. Like a CDL? Yep. Why? Why not? You drive, <laughs> <laughs> you drive buses? <laughs> uh no, the the military needed more bus drivers. Uh, so I said, That's why not? Cool. Let's do it. Yeah, I've driven a couple of school buses. So, yeah, now I've got another qualification on the military side um, of just random sports. Cool. So, All right, that I drove buses. I like it's great. It. I dig it. Julian, <laughs> you got anything you want to throw out? Yeah, I do. Uh, so I just learned recently that Flannery O'Connor. Big fan. Big fan. Um, had She's 40 a show. peacocks. She owned 40 peacocks and was often asked, what are these peacocks good for? And she would respond with, this question requires no response. <laughs> she was a little savage, but I love it. I had multiple peacocks for a while. We used to sell what? peacocks. You sold yeah. peacocks? Yeah, we had chickens, turkeys, uh, ducks, pheasants. We had a ton of ton of different critters, goats, meat rabbits, all kinds of things. But we sold peacocks because they're beautiful. And the first few peacocks we ever got, it was a female named Flannery. And then we had a male named uh, Gregory. And Gregory got eaten by a bear. Wow. After oh. Flannery O'Connor, is that yeah, where she got her? Oh, Did them. you know she had peacocks? Yeah, I got them. Oh. Uh, I got them for my wife for her birthday. Well, if you're listening and you just found out that Flannery O'Connor had peacocks, comment <laughs> Flannery O'Connor <laughs> down below. <laughs> <laughs> Make a spoof email call uh, with Flannery O'Connor related, and then like and subscribe to this episode. As yes. Well. Yeah. Thank All right. You. So none of this is what the show is about. I really like you guys. This is fun. Thank you. I had a really good time. Um, we're gonna be diving into. Sainthood, how we achieve that. I don't even know where to start with this question. I assume someone was prepared. JJ, what do you think? What you got? Well, there's a million things, and I'll just say something I read in Alphonsus of the Glory book to uh, give some encouragement. Uh, in pursuing the sainthood, there's going to be lots of things you can think about trying to do, and he's he used this to talk about the Bible. I'm going to use it to talk about graces and sainthood. Um 
for a water fountain, don't be sad about all the water that passes you by, but just be happy that every time you come back to it, there's more water to have. So. I don't think I'm smart enough to get that analogy. Like, I think I understand sort of, but can you like flesh that out a little bit? Yeah. So in this, definitely, I know I wouldn't be saying I've been trying and failing, but just got to keep trying. And there's so many things that I'm like, oh, that's a cool prayer. I want to try and pray that every day. Oh, that's a good devotion. I want to try and do that. You're never going to be able to do them all. Don't be sad about that. Just be happy that every time you come back, there's always a new grace that you can have, a new prayer you can pray. I mean, we were talking briefly before the show started, just sort of in that little banter at the beginning. And we were talking about sainthood and how something to get into on this episode was how we're all called to be saints, obviously, you know, and mm -hmm. how there's hopefully billions of saints, right? Millions and millions and millions of saints that we're totally unaware of. They don't have a feast day and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That being said, it is, and maybe I'm just weak and cowardly. I definitely am those things in some ways, but it does seem like when you really drill down into it, it does seem like such an extraordinarily difficult task. Um, and I, I didn't do a whole lot of prep here, but just as you were, you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, what is, what is Christ, the things that Christ tells us to do if we want to enter the kingdom of heaven are like super intense, you know, the, uh, when he tells, uh, who is it? He says, uh, is it Zacchaeus, right? They sell all your belongings and follow me. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you uh, uh, you must be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Like I, mm -hmm. I have all of these sort of flooding my brain and it does seem like a monumental undertaking to even attempt. And I think it's very scary. Like I said, I want to be a saint and I, I'm trying to do things to be a good human being. But when I look at it big picture wise, it scares the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Thoughts? Now that that makes sense as with many things the church urges you to do um i mean more than anything the church urges you to make it to heaven and that's definitely nothing that i'm going to be able to accomplish in my lifetime here on earth but as always the easy answer is what we can't do jesus can yeah i it was divine mercy sunday recently and i struggle with understanding divine mercy right i really struggle with that uh ultimate old testament god i understand in a big way right the justice <laughs> right i do i get it you know I, oh those people they did all these things they should have done you told them not to they did it anyway and they're going to destroy their city uh -huh. yeah like that makes sense to me that right that tracks but the mercy thing is something I, I i struggle with i think it's mostly because i struggle with showing mercy to others which mm -hmm. is why going back to the sort of overwhelming scary part of it when we pray the Our Father and we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, that's terrifying as somebody who really struggles with forgiveness and really struggles with mercy. And so I was, I was sort of sussing all this out with my spiritual director. And basically he was saying, well, obviously, you know, without, without God's mercy, none of us are going to heaven. No one gets there ever. And I said, yeah, right. None of us deserve it. What I said, yeah, mercy, mercy, mercy. And we just sort of went round and round. Eventually he gave me this analogy that I thought was, was great. He told me to think about a time when one of my children, I've, I've got five kids, I have a son and four daughters. So when they were really little, when they were two or three years old, when they did something that was bad, it was just wrong. And you told them it was wrong. Maybe they got a little bit of trouble for it and they apologized to you. And so I went through some scenarios in my head. I thought about my son leaving a, uh, the truck, uh, my, his bicycle behind my truck. I ran over it. I thought about it. My son used to hide a bunch of hamburgers and this, like various foods, but hamburgers in particular in a drawer, like in a buffet table behind where he sat. If he didn't want to eat it, I, I found it because the hamburger smell. Okay. <laughs> but then I thought about this one where my daughter, uh, who, when she was about three years old, I told her to do something and she was upset and she looked at me and she said, okay, but crack. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at it like, it's one of those, like I didn't want to laugh because like you can't call me a butt crack. I'm a grown man. I'm your father, <laughs> right? Um, and she said with this look of intent, like I'm I'm right here. What are you gonna do, butt crack? <laughs> right? And so I got down. I think I popped her on the head and said, "You can't say that." Right? I got very upset with her, you know. But the whole time I was trying not to laugh because it's so ridiculous. Of course, she doesn't know what that means. But I just can't have her doing that in public. That's awesome. And she said, you know, some version of, "I'm really sorry. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad." And then immediately it was this, oh, I totally forgive you. It's okay. Thank you. Like, everything's good. And he said, your sins, even your bad ones, even your mortal ones, that's how God is responding. He's saying, yeah, you dumb person, right? You don't, 
I know you didn't understand that this is an infinite offense against my infinite goodness, right? Obviously, you can't understand that right now. And I love you. And I just wanted you to understand that was wrong and come back to me. Anyway, mm. that analogy helped me a lot with, with mercy. <laughs> <laughs> my, so now that's what I think. I want to think about mercy. Yeah. My daughter calling me a buck, right? <laughs> she called me a lot of names there for a while. She doesn't do it anymore, but she's my feisty one. Mm. Mm. I will say, um, in general, I'm happy with my lot in life of being a man, like, in general, that seems to be working out for me. But I will say I am. This episode is going to go in a very different direction. That's going to be a different one. It's going to be an intervention for me. <laughs> this is a new episode. But, uh, but I will say something that I'm kind of jealous of women about is it seems like all the best ways that I've found to picture God's love, like two of my favorites is just like, he loves you like he the way a perfect husband does where he just like wants to do everything he can for you and that his favorite thing is when you're together and he can just sacrifice for you and love you and then the other one is um is just the idea of like what you're saying of like a father who just his little daughter he can't say mad at her for more than like five and a half seconds tops yeah, man. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, so I'm either wife or the daughter in this relationship. That doesn't feel <laughs> right. But um, my son did a lot of stupid stuff that I was, yeah, corrected him for too. The next story, next time I tell that story, I'll, I'll pull a stupid, stupid yeah, son version. That's good. But you can say mad at your son for like at least ten and a half seconds. Oh, I can say mad at my son for like, yeah, like a week. <laughs> like a week. Oh, <laughs> weeks. No, I, it's much easier to say mad at my son than my daughters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of a lot of truth in that though, um, because. Obviously, our example um, for a perfect example of how to love um, and how to be a, a good Christian when it comes to loving God and when it comes to prayer, when it comes to sacrifice and humility is Mary, mm. right? That's the first and foremost. Um, and there's a book that I was reading um, called A Bride Adorned. Uh, shout out to Father John Neppel. He's up in uh, Colorado and he's on another podcast called Catholic Stuff You Should Know, which is a little bit bigger than this one. Um, right, right now. We're about to catch up. Right now it is. Yeah, we're we're, coming, coming we're in a you. foot race. We're in a foot race. We're coming for y'all. Um, How many listeners does he have in India? Because we've got a bunch of those for some reason. It's really cool. <laughs> Big shout out! Thanks everybody over in India. All the best. But they don't have that. Right. Um, but he writes a book called A Bride Adorned, and it's it's a really um, elaborate name. Uh, the Church Perichoresis, and it talks about Marian as the Perichoresis. That's a huge word. Um, but really, it's it's Mary as the one that um, surrounds and the one that, that encompasses all the ways that we're called to love Christ. And yeah, in our spiritual life, unfortunately, as men, yeah, we got to put down some of that masculine guard mm -hmm. um, and take up that maybe a more effeminate stance, but that, that, that humble stance that... No, it's not, it's not effeminate. It's not effeminate. No. It's not effeminate. Sorry, wrong word. Yeah, men are never called to be effeminate. Never right? called to be effeminate. It's actually more masculine. It's, it's just more around the right. fake masculine. We see it as right. effeminate. Society or right. Our there's a disordered understanding. There's a subculture of society effeminate. that has, you know, the machismo man, and yeah. they see that as effeminate. My apologies. Wrong word. No, it, can be, um, it can be, yeah, it can be stereotypically feminine. I didn't mean to correct you. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I By all means, but I've not, had a long day <laughs> not raising chickens, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, <glasses>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no so we're, we're called to take that stance that stance as the bride before mm -hmm. her groom um and as men that's very hard it's yeah like, it's like wow how i mean because every every time you go to mass right that is the wedding feast that is the body sacrifice and as men that is what you're called to be for a woman if you happen to be married or as a priest you're called to be in persona christi giving yourself mm -hmm. out right but how do you receive that as a man that's, Ooh, that's that's good. the challenge. It's okay. like, does okay. he answer this in the book? Does he answer this yeah. in the book? I haven't finished it. Okay. <laughs> no, no. There's a. It's it's the book goes um, so far into Marian uh, theology and whatnot, mm. and Mariology, and it's very beautiful about just the proper stance of the church as a right. whole, um, and then our stance within the church, just as laity. Um, mm. But it gives you that rundown of like, as saints, we have exam or. As our call to sainthood and our call to holiness, we have the great examples of the saints, right? And there was never a saint that didn't have, there. I mean, there, there's a lot of great saints out there, and a lot of them had great devotions to Mary. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them, whether it was a man or a woman, 
right? They had great devotions to Mary. And I think that's something for men uh, to start with if you're striving for sainthood. Start with a devotion to Mary. Oh, that's huge. Um, mm-hmm. If you're not Catholic, maybe start with Catholicism. You know, um, <laughs> no, I actually, and, yeah. and like, even with that, I'm, I'm going to continue to go on a rant. But I had a friend, like, um, it, me and, a, and another friend that's been on the podcast, Brie Kazusko, mm-hmm. uh, were sitting in math class talking about Catholic things. Um, why? Because we didn't want to pay attention to math class. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we were talking about a Marian dogma. Great, as we should. Do. As we should. Yeah. And our friend, two doors over, two deaths over, is like, what are y'all talking about? We're like, oh, we're talking about Mary. She's like, I have so many questions. I'm Methodist. My like, whole oh, boy. <laughs> cool. So we get into this, after class, we get into this, you know, long conversation about saints, Mary, like, do we, you know, do we uh, pray to Mary? Do we worship Mary? You know, and trying to answer some of these questions and give her some feedback and you know, and she's got great things coming from the Methodist side. She's like, well, we still have confirmation and we have this and that. And I'm like, Mary was there during the confirmation and Pentecost. Um, right. And she, we ended up having this good conversation. And later on, we're like, hey, what are you doing Friday night? We got some Salinan sisters coming in. Cool. Right? Nuns like Love solve them. 90% of problems. Yes. Really yeah. Yeah. And we call it fun with nuns. Yeah. It was a, but they're awesome. not nuns. She's a sister. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and so she's like. I'm coming. I have so many questions. And so we showed up and I don't know if you ever met Sister Elfie, but <laughs> Sister Elfie from the Salesian Sisters is like, I know you're not Catholic, but you're welcome here. She like straight up like dug into her. She's like, Why are you not Catholic? I'm like, <laughs> Way to go, oh, no. Sister Elfie. Yeah, and she hands her a, she hands her a statue of Mary. She's like, Here, follow Mary's example. And this Ava, she's like what am i supposed to do like what what like this sister is like not taking no for an answer right um and she continued to pursue she joined the church a couple weeks ago yeah. long story uh-huh. short oh, that is of so cool. dogma of mary because of the prayers of sister Charlfi and just the pursuit of of truth um mm-hmm. and i think she she definitely contributes it to mary as a well. whole but so uh so now that all the men have admitted that we need to be women to follow <laughs> What do the real what do the real women <laughs> have to say? <laughs> Our corporate overlords. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Yeah. Well, it is a lot easier as a as a woman uh to follow Christ. Just kidding. You have no idea how excited I was to delve into that. Yeah, super uh, <laughs> I mean it is it is I guess in that in the sense that you guys are talking about a lot easier to say like I identify with Mary, you know, I identify as sure. the church. Like that is not something I struggle with that, that men have to struggle with. Um, or you don't have to struggle with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, Mary was like a huge part of my conversion story as well. Um, and that's just because uh, she's so good. Like she's so pure. Um, and that's kind of like what we, what we long to see is just this pure relationship between mm-hmm. any of us and Jesus. Like that's, that's the ultimate um call i think with sainthood we get we always get caught up in um we need to do these things and i need to be good whatever society defines as good um we need to do this and 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 love these people in this way and it's like ultimately the heart of it is just like the heart of mary is jesus is what what does he want us to do today is that pray in a room by myself me and jesus or is that to go out and feed the poor or like sure whatever it is um yeah. So for me, it's, it's, yeah, it's way more about like the heart. I do think there's a whole lot to, I mean, I think that's hitting the nail on the head, but I do think there's a whole lot to what you said there in the beginning about there, there is, I don't want to say there's a different path because the path is Christ, right? But there, there's, I think, pretty distinctive sort of strategies in striving towards sainthood for men versus women, mm-hmm. right? And I think I was having this conversation with a group of kids the other day and I was talking that and I, in confession, no, it was with my spiritual director. We were talking about um, we were talking about certain sins, and he was talking about how some sins are natural. They're still sins, but they're natural sins, right? And some sins are unnatural sins. And the example he uh, he gave is if you were to um, commit adultery, right? You you ran off with some other woman, right? That is a sin, but it is a it is a natural sin as opposed to if you were to run off with a guy. Okay, that is a sin and it's also unnatural. And he said, but there's, and then we talked about gender specific. So, and it really sort of opened up my thoughts on 
sort of the different strategies, right? Ultimately, it is following Christ. It is his sacraments and his church, right? That is that is the way that we we, we go to heaven. But I do think you need to look at it sort of from from different sides because mm -hmm. we are we are made very different. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you think, Mary? Regarding sainthood? anything, I just wanted to put you on the spot. You look you look like you're, you're like pensively over there, looking like there's a lot of a whole a whole like watershed of knowledge about to <laughs> burst through the dam of your lips. Yes. Oh, okay. No, no pressure. No pressure. Also, we're doing it in two minutes. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I've been reading Story of a Soul for the first time. Oh, oh, and awesome. I just got to the part where she said, um, St. Therese, I guess she was nearing the end of her life. And she was like, I want to be a doctor of the church. I want to be a martyr. I want to be a missionary. I just want to be everything. And she was talking about how, I think it was St. Ignatius of Antioch. Like his last words were like, I can't wait for the lions in the arena to grind me into the bread of life or some cool, some nice. beautiful yeah. quote like that. And then she went on to say, I like envy the poor Christians who live in the time of the Antichrist because mm -hmm. like what glorious saints they're going to all be. Right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's like us. Right. We live in this time where we're not all necessarily, I mean, there are a lot of Christians maybe being thrown to the lions, but it's more like we're in like a psychological battlefield a hundred percent especially yeah. like us in america and it's a lot more difficult i think to embrace things like sainthood when like like you were saying running off with a woman or a man that requires a little bit more effort yeah but controlling your mind that's a whole nother world that we are having to deal with mm. right now no so. i think and i'm not saying this this isn't coming from a prideful place i really do think this is true i think it is so much easier to go to hell when you're fat and happy and comfortable, right? right? It is a lot easier to be a saint, I think, when your head is on the line, when you might actually be thrown mm -hmm. to the lions or whatever. And it's so much harder for us because life is so much easier, mm -hmm. right? It's so much, the options are so much more, um, I, I don't know, ill-defined almost. Yeah. Um, I really want to dig into this some more, but we are at break. So we are going to take a quick break. Uh, this has been a blast. We're going to pick up right here with Sainthood here in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This is Honest to God, a production of AM 1160 The Quest, Atlantis Catholic Radio. Did you do that okay? You did it okay. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. All right, Love ladies that. and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Hey guys, for the past 500 years or so, the church has outlawed selling indulgences, which hopefully means that you've got some spare cash laying around. If you're looking to tithe, we here at Honest to God would uh, really encourage you to run over and donate to the Quest Atlanta. You can do that on questatlanta.com. Thank you so much for all of your support. All right, and we are back. Are we back? Are we on? Yeah, we're back. Cool. We're All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is Honest to God, a production of AM 1160 The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. Super pumped. Part two, sainthood. We still got JJ. We still got Hannah. We still got Mary and David. Producer Julian, tickling keys, taking names. That's right. Killing it. Looking good, right too. Here. Yeah. Perfect amount of stubble, like I said earlier. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to dive in to some more sainthood stuff. I do. I'm still laughing a little bit from our off-air conversation, but it goes pretty solid. Pretty solid. And all of it was topical. It won't make any sense when this airs, which is today, because this show is live, like all of our shows here <laughs> on Honest to God. Um, cool. So who was it? Who was the last part? Mary. Mary was talking right before we went to break. And you were talking about things, and I don't remember what they were. Can you remind me? Saint, a follow -up sainthood in the digital age. Yeah. Psychological warfare. And maybe I am just sort of tooting my own horn or whatever to say it's more difficult right now. to. Do this. But I honestly, I honestly think that there is something to that. Like I said, I think us being satiated, us being comfortable, is a makes it more likely for us to lose our souls mm -hmm. than 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 ever before, but also I don't want to be some Luddite naysayer who says everything's bad nowadays and it's all, we got all this technology and that's bad and bad and bad. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of positives and a lot of opportunities that exist in this, I don't know, the 21st century that we live in. Anybody have any mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Anybody want to dive in? Well, everything's about to change for sure. Like what do you mean? We, we haven't seen nothing yet once the AI starts to really pick up steam and we're just going to have no reason to do anything anymore. I kind of literally just want to talk about that for the next hour. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. But um, it's also now while we're kind of in the calm of the storm, mm -hmm. just collecting our bearings and getting ready for, you know, we're not going to be satiated forever. That's just the human right. story. Like right now we're kind of in this like 
good period. Like these are the good times. So what to become a saint really like ultimately it just comes down to just self mastery, which is what I really love about Catholicism compared to other religions. Cause for a while I was shopping around and Catholicism was really the only one that really provided you guidelines to self mastery and discipline. Like, honestly, can you speak to that a little bit sort of specifically? Well, I like, totally agree with you. Like I was into the whole like Joe Rogan entourage and all those podcasts about like getting up at 4am and doing carnivore diet and meditation and all that stuff. But at some point you get to a point where you're like, what is this all for? Like, right. what, what am I doing this for other than myself? Whereas Catholicism offered like this epic story that we all get to partake in. And no matter who you are, no matter what disposition you're in, you have a significant role that only you can achieve. And that just gave me a reason to get up in the morning and do little things like I don't like St. Therese in Story of a Soul. It's like I don't have to be this great martyr. I don't have to be this super deep theologian. I just have to be really patient with my annoying neighbor who like mm -hmm. throws up in my yard at 12 p.m. and like being patient with my parents despite like throwing up in your yard throwing <laughs> up in my yard and <laughs> all these little things that just don't seem to matter but if you can get to the nitty gritty of your flaws like things like getting martyred or nothing like right. the martyrs didn't go into martyrdom unprepared like this was their calling and that's why they were able to go into it with joy whereas right now i would freak out and probably can't cave and not do it right so i right now in this grace period that we're in like just some self-mastery and learning how to love others like that is the biggest challenge right now well the distinction is between is, is self-mastery for the sake of something right yes. not yeah. it's not self-mastery for self-mastery's sake oh you're pointing at me Okay. Yes. Well, Sorry, I, did you raise your hand? I didn't raise my hand, but that's okay. You, we can talk. It was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it was maybe it was the Holy Spirit. So there's a reason that I'm sitting here and I'm not tickling keys. We decided to. Oh, what do you mean, JJ? You're not JJ. No, I'm not. Sorry. Well, yeah. yeah the, well, welcome to I reality. I look kind of like him. Uh, do I? Oh, the facial hair. Yeah, he's a man. I haven't liked his video in like JJ. three and a half years. Well, that's so not good ahead of ourselves, Julian. It's take years. Um, but no. So JJ is over there tickling keys. Hey, JJ, shout out. Uh, he was just thrown at it by me. I said, hey, time for you to try this. Just like when God wants us to become saints, he just throws us into Whoa, the fire. It's an analogy. It is an analogy, <laughs> which is why we, why I think the Holy Spirit chose today. I, I was sitting there and went, JJ, you're sitting over here. Are, are you sure? Yes, you got it. And he's he's nailing it. I'm watching him. I'm supervising, still producing in ways, and he's doing a good job. That's the secret to sainthood. They won't tell you. Do things you're bad at. <laughs> That's but like, like, whoa, there's a line death. Dig into that. That was like a, yeah. a Jaden right. Smith. Sweet. Speaking of things, <laughs> you, yeah. speaking of things that you're bad at, uh, the clock's been counting down from some arbitrary number, and <laughs> I don't know what time it is. It was from five minutes. Don't worry. About four. All right. Cool. I got you. Um, so. Uh, there we go. It's all right. We're going to get it fixed. Anyway. Um, so, so we just totally derailed a really good topic here about pursuing sanctity in this modern age. No, but I do feel like, I don't know. I, I do feel like, once again, that, that it is much more difficult in so many ways now than it used to be. Uh, and by used to be, I mean, like, for all of human existence. But you brought up, Mary, a second ago, the whole sort of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, grim perception of the future I'm, uh, I'm an optimist i'm a okay. hopeful melancholic a second ago i thought you said ai hey, was going to destroy everything it is okay but it's going to be cool afterward okay oh sick okay cool yeah what does that mean um well the sky has to turn red before you can get on a boat and sail away to heaven like okay. Frodo. you know you gotta trek through some i literally watched Mordor. two towers like two days ago and it was the best yeah my kids couldn't decide on a movie and i said i can decide on a movie it's the same movie i always pick whenever we can't decide on a movie it's well, so relevant towers. yeah so relevant yeah but yeah psychological warfare and harnessing our minds before it's too late mm. and it's never too late because it's the last moment before you breathe your last like you never know what god's gonna do what are going back to what you were saying sort of sainthood is found in the minutia which i think is totally true right sainthood primarily not always primarily chances are none of us in this room are gonna have our heads chopped off you know by some muslim extremists or anything like that right chances of Possibly. are we're all going to to live you know, god willing we're gonna live hopefully long lives and then die of some disease or something one day right um which is that's, that's good that's okay right and 
And so the way we're called to sanctity is not, you know, heroism against, uh, you know, being accused of being infidels or something like that. But it is in those, those small ways that, I don't know, that's, that's incredibly difficult to do. Mm-hmm. What are some canonized saints, if you know any, I've, I've been racking my brain trying to come up with one, who had, who were, who found their sanctity through the minutiae. I know you were just talking about St. Therese, which I think is a, is a good example, but she was also a nun. She was also, you know, she lived this life devoted to, to prayer and service and all of these things. Are there saints that we're aware of? Are there canonized saints who, I don't know, don't have some big explosive story like that? I mean, the first person who pops into my head does have an explosive story at the end of his life, mm-hmm. but it's always the beginning of his life that struck me, which is St. Thomas More, mm-hmm. because he didn't just happen to have a chance to be martyred and do it one day. Uh, it goes into the beginning of his life and said that he had a private chapel in his house that he'd retire to and pray every day and read the scriptures. And honestly, that's kind of the main minutia you need is just prayer and scriptures mm-hmm. and if you do that, everything else will come, I think. I mean, uh, maybe he's a, he, uh, Carlo Acuda. Like, oh, Acudis, really Carlo Acuda? Yeah. Yeah. Acudis, like, yeah. He managed to live in the modern day and age. And I know it was from a young age. And maybe there's some benefit there um, having that kind of disposition. Mm-hmm. But I, at the same time, it's like, as he, he did get a little bit older in a digital age, and he understood some of the evils and atrocities of the world. Um, but he continued on, you know, pursuing the graces of life, right? Uh, forming that website about the Eucharistic miracles, right? Like he, I would say, like amidst his circumstances, um, yeah. I mean, he managed to really shine through, but it was not in any like particularly like explosive. Like he was under the threat of a gun. It was more so like, I want to go to adoration, and my parents aren't exactly holy. No, that's exactly what I'm like, talking about. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. That that is heartening to me <laughs> that, to hear things that are sort of sort of more of that variety. And I'm not in no way knocking crusaders and martyrs and you know great monks and nuns and and all of these things, right? But I I don't know those those, so, those simple stories that are going to probably more than likely look a whole lot like my life. Um, I think that's something that's super super appealing. Uh, all right, let's see. I think. You kind of summed this up a minute ago, Mary, uh, about talking about self-mastery and all of that. But I would like to sort of talk a little more about brass tacks, right? And there's the obvious stuff, and maybe the obvious stuff needs to be said. But, like, what do we, what can we do, right? And I think a lot of times is what can we stop doing in our lives right now to push us in the direction of sanctification? And I know that seems like a very obvious answer. And you're gonna say, well, go to mass a lot and see the sacraments a lot. And that's okay, but I, I'm, I'm curious because I've been, ever since I had children really, ha- sort of this constant re-examining of my life. And I would like to say it's because I wanna spend eternity with my creator, which is true, I do. But I think it's primarily because I want my children to spend eternity with their creator and I wanna model that well for mm-hmm. them. So I don't know, thoughts, tips, what can we do? What practical thing can we do? I don't care how cliche it is. I'd love to dig into it. Hmm. And I refuse to let there be dead air on the radio. I mean, I like I like what you said. <laughs> you know, like desiring another's uh, another's entry into heaven, whether it's your kids or your friends around you. Um, that's a great way to um, not have a selfish stance on it. Because um, especially like when you're like, what am I in this for? Like, is it for me to get to heaven? And then you start looking at your your reasons for being Catholic or your reasons for going to mass on Sundays and whatnot. And you're like, is it because this makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside? Yeah. Or is it because I really care? Um, and so you got to get into that, that um, looking back into those times. Okay. When did my faith make sense? When was my faith challenged? Have I been challenged? Have I challenged my own faith? Um, and so really like just, just going through and examine uh, whether it's a, a daily thing or something that you do with your spiritual director, um, if you don't have a spiritual director, get, get a, a spiritual, spiritual director. director. Everybody listening, get a spiritual director. Like, Amen. Spiritual if, if, director, if you're Catholic, go get a spiritual director. If you're not Catholic, get a spiritual director. What is a spiritual director? Just someone that is that is more informed than you um, on these topics, and that might be able to give you some some really helpful tips in your spiritual life, um, from the practicals to you know, from 
what do you do when your daughter calls you a butt crack? Or what do you, you know? No, that's 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 about as intense as right. Or what do you do? My life is uh, and and then for people in the professional world, what do you do when you're met in in your professional life with things that are contradictory to your faith? Um, I know that's right. that's something that I've talked with a lot of people about, like. When your faith is challenged, how do you react? I think that's a great litmus test of how much do you really care about your faith? How much do you really want to be a saint, right? Because right. you get people that are like, oh, yeah, I'd love to be a saint. I'd love to go to heaven, you know? And I think they want to be uh, either just like the common whatever, like I made it to mass, like, you know, maybe make it into heaven, or I'm going to be a saint because I want everyone to know who I am in the Catholic Church because I found this fandom. Um, there's, you know, those are the two, like, flaws in that. Right. Whereas that third one needs to be, no, like, if I make it a, make it to heaven, that's my goal. If people know I made it to heaven, amen. If they don't, right. amen. Um, but at the end of the day, when I am challenged in my faith, how do I stand up, right? What I feel, what I thought, what, you know, um, I, it's a big thing in my workplace uh, where people are like, all right, like, when someone says, hey, you're not going to be able to make it to Mass this Sunday. Or we don't have your specific service, you know, are you just going to take that for face value? Are you going to push for it, you know? Or you have someone that comes around or maybe you're hanging out with people late in the afternoon because you had a long day of work uh, and, you know, these guys are like, oh, let's go pick up some girls. Like, are you like, yeah, totally, let's do it, whatever. And then you're going to kind of shy away from that big question of like, dude, no, that's not what we're here for. Or, you know, let's go get like blithering drunk. Like, no. And throw up in Mary's yard. And throw up in Mary's yard. Um, like, in those in those daily life things, like, are you willing to uphold the standard? Yeah, there's some great things that you can do when it comes to socializing, going to a bar, hanging out with... I'm, I'm talking from a guy's perspective for sure here. Um, but once it crosses the line, what do you do? How do you say no? How do you... I, like, I, you know, I, mean, I think a lot of that stuff comes back to what you said originally, which is the whole daily examine thing. Yeah examining your life in, all the time, like regularly, not to the point of scrupulosity, right? There's definitely, I've been super guilty of scrupulosity, especially right after my conversion, but that examination sort of honestly of yourself, I think is is super important to, to grow in in your relationship with Christ and sort of your clawing, struggling towards salvation. And I kind of think viewing it as a fight and a struggle, right, towards salvation, I, you know, I, I give the Protestants a hard time a lot on the show, um, and you know, love, love, love our, our, our Protestants, uh, especially our Protestant listeners who like and subscribe to Honest to God, <laughs> approximately on the Sixth West Atlanta Catholic Radio. But one of the things that has always been really difficult that I've really struggled with, um, because it's not true, but I mean, this really bothered me, is this idea that once you've achieved that you can achieve salvation right now. <laughs> right Good luck. because i will because and once again i'm not i'm not trying to attack i'm just trying to look at it from my perspective i don't know what i would do if i didn't un have this understanding of the truth that the church teaches that no it is a it is a fight it is a struggle it is a cross carrying ripping off the fingernails as you are crawling and bleeding and crying and fighting towards salvation and it's okay and it's good and it's worth it that's what we're doing together and it's okay it makes me think of like William Wallace. Sorry, yeah. uh, and like don't that worry, comment of like salvation back. is here. It's like ah uh, no, that's the uh, okay. Salvation's here. We're gonna go back and sit on our beds. And then William Wallace is like, "Are you gonna trade every day right. from then until now to fight for this one time for freedom?" Like that's our whole life. That's your life is this one time, right? And like you said, it's not until your very last breath that you can keep on fighting, keep on striving for that sainthood that we desire. And and when you get into that disparagement i think we're all disparaged like you said how am i going to be a saint with this god that you know should have justice on all these things right. that i've done in my life but is also merciful and you know how do i deal with this um well and even in all that crawling and fighting and spitting and whatever towards right. salvation it's still not me it's right, still, right. It's, it's like it's not I'm over here right 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 now you have to let me in right it like, still all comes down to mercy amen Amen. And, and, and understanding that mercy. And uh, I love the um, I love the quote from Padre Pio. He says, love being nailed to the cross with Christ more than being at the foot of the cross. I'm like, that's it. Like, that's it, man. Like, I totally deserve the cross. I totally deserve the lashings, the whippings and everything. But at the same time, I'm just merely protected by this body of Christ that is in front of me, nailed to this cross. Right. And that is the reality. It's like, 
I'm there for it, right? right? Being a saint is, is okay. Like, I got to be willing to go through that. Right. But I don't have to. Right. Right. It's, it's, a, yeah. 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 it's, it's that, it's that humble stance of saying, all right, let's roll. What were you going to say, Mary? <laughs> like, were you not? I'm sorry. No, I'm, I thought... I'm Hannah, but yes. I'm sorry, uh, Hannah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, this, uh, I was going to go on a tangent, so he definitely needed to finish his thought. Um, tangent away. But, uh, like, I guess for for me, like what would in my day to day, like the way that I can I can pursue sanctity. Uh, maybe this goes back to male female. I do not relate with the grueling in in the mud, getting nailed to the cross. All this, like whenever I picture myself with Jesus on the cross, I'm sitting on his shoulder, and I'm looking down at like everybody else that he's saving, because um, it is not my it's not my work. It's not me gratifying myself. It's him doing all the work. And I see the pain on his face and I see the love pouring out of him. Um, but like for me in my day to day, as small as it seems, like it sounds might sound weird, but like I just I'm trying to be honest with people. Yeah. Um, and by that, I mean, like I sometimes go to daily mass before work and like somebody will go, hey, wasn't the traffic terrible? Like for, from like 730 to 8, wasn't it just terrible? And I'm like, oh, actually, I was I was in daily mass. So I I got to work earlier, so I didn't experience the traffic. And they're like there's a chair there's a church near here or like it's just it like always sparks conversation um or if it's like what you were saying earlier let's go over to the bar and get like blithering junk i'm like oh actually i don't i'll have a pint like that's fine but like i'll cut myself off after that for me right. that's all it takes um but yeah like like it's just being honest you know and not not like forcing it down their throat just saying like this this is my line and like i'll be near you if you need me to like drive you home or whatever like i'll be there for you but like this is my life and like welcome welcome to it you know and then i like I've, I've just found like at work or with friends or just around town like it actually invites a lot of questions yeah cool. and then being honest to the answers totally. with those and if you don't know you don't know and that's perfectly fine being joyful in your faith yeah. and honest about it i think is mm -hmm. like sums up evangelization done well a lot <laughs> of the time yeah sanctity done well yeah I mean, <laughs> even martyrs and people that suffered people that suffered so much right they enjoyed it i i i'm gonna go oh back. they enjoyed it st lawrence did <laughs> like that was cool i'm just yeah, saying all right cool, he though. totally enjoyed that i just read even if it's not a right quote but i, I just read a really intense uh uh biography about maximilian colby he didn't, it didn't seem like he liked it at the end at all it seemed really bad probably not but he was singing <laughs> i know yeah, yeah. He yeah but he, he was, was doing you can have you can have joy oh yeah joy that's what you said. you said joy yeah which is great yeah you can be miserable with joy i think like physically miserable mm -hmm. suffering severely suffering yes with a whole lot of joy yes yeah and yeah and that's uh, that's it right i mean just living it in your daily life um and showing it through those little things um and i think like for those that you know maybe you aren't um maybe you're new to the church right i know easter was very recently so we might have a lot of new catholics running around here which is great with little hills on their head um yeah but the Archdiocese of Atlanta actually mandates that all new Catholics listen to, <laughs> subscribe to, and like "Honest to God," to God. a production of AM eleven sixty The Quest Atlanta's Catholic Radio, <laughs> or else, or, or else, <laughs> yeah, or it, it, or it expires after a year. You have to go through RCIA again. I don't make rules, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just like surround yourself with those good influences as well, right? I think uh, that's your your closest group of friends needs to be that good influence for you, whether it's your roommates or um, you know your loved ones. Right. And being able to say yes to those those friend groups that are going to bring you closer to Christ and then no to those ones that are going to tear you away. And then when you grow in your faith. Yeah. I mean, hanging out and being being that selfless witness of like, yeah, I go to church in the morning. What do you do? You know, like uh, or hey, I got to make it to mass on Sunday. I know we're working this Sunday. Um, like but it's huge. The needle is hard to thread, at least mm -hmm. for me is doing that without it becoming a prideful thing yes right yes because hey, when i do something good i uh i am totally the pharisees like i y'all are lucky i don't literally cover like my face with ashes and like wear sackcloth <laughs> when i'm in here so talking about just, is that what yeah, you do on the how holy i am hello everyone oh i'm sorry do i look sick it's because i've been fasting no he doesn't for it's jesus not, it's not sackcloth and ashes it's baby chickens at three in the morning yeah yeah <laughs> Um, let me tell you how hard I have it because of how good I am. And then, yeah. But it's really difficult not for that not to be a pride right. thing. That's why I love what you said. Is be honest. If you, at, you yeah. ask me a question, I'll answer your question, right? But I'm not. I'm not 
going out and advertising it. And even that inward struggle of not saying like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked me that question. So I can tell you how great I am. That's a thing to right. go with. Yeah. 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 If you have everything to gain as a saint and nothing to lose. All right. We're going to get some sanctification tips from uh, Julian over there. Oh, and yeah. And I want to give one more shout out to God's mercy before we jump on <laughs> sure. to uh, um, loaded questions, Junior. Sanctification tips. Come join honest to God. <laughs> I, and I, I echo that a lot, but it, it doesn't just have to be honest to God. You can join your church. You can you can do something to serve. We are called to serve. And honest to God really is a great way to serve in this age of new media that we're in. Uh, you don't just have to come on here. We're talking about selfless giving. Um, you don't just have to come on the air. We have people all around here that you can't even see that are part of this operation. You can see um, Megan back there, though. You can see Megan. I am so trying to hide. No, you're <laughs> trying to hide. <laughs> and I can't wait to get Megan on the air. But there, there's a lot that goes into this operation that we could really use the help and support. And if you if you have the time to give, we would love to get, uh, receive it. But your church, your local church, could also use it too. So yeah. that, that's kind of my that's my pitch on no. sanctification, and I'm dealing with some sanctification now because I'm putting out fires from this seat, which I normally do from over there, which has been right. interesting. Yeah, but uh, it's, we're we're growing. It's a quote that I bring up a lot, but it it ultimately what it a big part of what it means to be a, a human being who's secure in your vocation, who's doing what you ought to be doing, involves I think it's C.S. Lewis, right? I, I've quoted him a hundred times, but taking that mirror that we are born with that faces ourselves and tells us to worry about ourselves and turning it outwards for the sake of other people, right? Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, with community and do do something, serve somewhere, do so. You are none of you, not me, not anybody in this room, not anybody listening or watching at home, none of you are meant to live for yourself in any way. You are all meant for the service of others. You're ultimately meant for salvation, right? You're meant to know, love, and serve God so you can spend eternity with him. But in this life, in the tangible sort of corporeal world, you you are not meant for you. You are meant for other people. I think going into all the issues with the culture and the future and whatever, all these things that I'm worried about, too, I think it ultimately comes down to people not realizing or at least not admitting that, they're, that they are not made for their, themselves. And once again, I struggle with that as well. So... We're going to pass out popsicle sticks. I'm going to skip my my last pitch for God's mercy because I would go off on it. Um, he loves you. He's desperate for you. Uh, just if anybody needed to hear that today, uh, you, you need to know that, right? The uh, I always think about the prodigal son, and when the son starts to walk back, the father doesn't sit there and wait. The father charges towards him to embrace him, and that is God, and he wants you personally, not universal you. He wants you. So embrace that. Be a saint. All right. Oh, pop, these are old school popsicle sticks. All right, cool. I'm ready. Lightning round. What is your going to bed routine? I mean, I I put my kids to bed. Uh, I take care of various animals for various reasons. Uh, and then I, I drink a bourbon. And if I'm feeling particularly fancy, I read. Really, that's not true. If my wife is reading, I read. If my wife's asleep, I watch YouTube videos, which I'm ashamed of, and I'm trying to do less. There you go. Oh, there's some good things you can. My say. vanity, my vanity is just uh, so much that if I see my wife read, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna look like I'm some rube. I'm gonna read too. I can read. I can know how to read. Have for a long time. <laughs> All right. My mine is. Have you ever been trapped in an elevator? And I can thankfully say I have not. Though working and putting out fires from here has felt like I was trapped in something, but uh, we 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 made it work. But I've yeah, not man. been trapped in an elevator. Cool. By the grace of God. What you got, Hannah? Uh, would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout everything? Uh, if any of my friends are listening, they know that I'm quiet, so I basically already whisper. So whisper. And I basically already shout yeah. everything. It's like, so I already, I already lived that one out. What you got, Mary? Have you ever cheated on a test? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, bet time. I did it today. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true I, I do not do that <laughs> i went to art school so i had to take one math class and i found this japanese guy on the internet and in exchange for him doing all my math tests i did all his english well, you like really oh, no cheated way. yeah oh, wow. that's like high level like you like yeah <laughs> partner in crime <laughs> kind of, yeah right. you hired we both someone. graduated and they can't take the degree back mm -hmm. so here we are no they no. still ask me we hope not <laughs> have you ever pulled an all-nighter um too many times. Uh, yeah, that's it. Too many times. Have you ever called in sick to work because of a hangover? 
Shame on you. You know honest to God participants don't <laughs> indulge in public drinking. And they don't call in late to work for it. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm kidding. I have, minutes early. I have we don't indulge in it. 100% called her to work for a hangover before. It's been a long time. Uh, it was a wedding. But uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I've definitely done that. Yeah. I actually don't get hungover. What? Right? No, right now, I could, I could not get hungover. <laughs> like, right now, if you pulled out a bottle of Jack and put it on the table and said, we're going to drink this whole thing, I would I would just fall asleep. Like, I, I don't think I could. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in in tasteful it. fashion. Uh, good cat. All right. Out. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I think that's all the time we got today. Yeah, we got a 40 seconds, so you can... We have 40 seconds? Yeah, 40 seconds. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, what about our sponsor? <laughs> what is... Yeah, oh, yeah what's our sponsor? Good, good, good. Aviation diapers. <laughs> Aviation diapers. We learned today off air that apparently... Pilots wear diapers. <laughs> All of them. They do. Aviation the diapers. <laughs> okay, not but, but seriously, this episode of Lost Guys is brought to you by Aviation Diapers. <laughs> Big shout out to the U.S. Air Force. Thanks for keeping our our skies safe and our bathrooms empty aviation diapers <laughs> all right that's all the time we have for today ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching thanks for listening guys thanks for being here this has been a blast you are watching honest to god a production of am 1160 the quest atlanta's catholic radio producer jj signing out over and out mm.